All right, good afternoon. It's my uh, pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, IAS Institute for Advanced Studies uh, groundbreaking science lecture. And today we have a very eminent professor, Professor James Tam. So it is my uh, privilege now to say a few words about James. I think I first met James many years ago back in 1998. At that time, I was Dean of Science at NUS. And then Chuan Nam Hai introduced James to Singapore. <laughs> okay, so he came and visited NUS. And then the next thing I knew, he was here in NTU. And he is the founding Dean of the School of Biological Sciences. That massive building that you see there, the grand building, is his work. Okay, is his design, his idea. All right. So NTU uh, grew things uh, not from bottom up, but it's like from top down, you know. It started with engineering, no sciences, you know. And then James was the one who brought biological sciences first to NTU. And then it was only five years later, you know, that I came and we introduced chemistry, physics, mathematics, yeah. And then the Asian School of Environment came a little later after that. So that's the history of NTU. Things uh, were built from top down <laughs> rather than from bottom up. So James is a very eminent professor and it's very hard to get our eminent professors like James to give a talk within NTU, you know. You see James going all over the world, international conferences, you know, plenary speaker and everything. But he, this is the first time that I'm going to hear James talk at NTU. I'm sure for some of you too, right? Huh? So James, uh, uh, founding dean of the School of uh, Biological Sciences, and uh, he did his uh, undergraduate and PhD at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, the very big university at uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and then uh, he did his postdoctoral training with uh, Professor Bruce Merrifield. Bruce Merrifield is a Nobel Prize winner. So usually people who work with Nobel Prize winners have potential to win Nobel Prizes. <laughs> so James is a very eminent uh, peptide uh, chemist in a sense. Of, he's very much involved in peptide sciences. You all know about that. And James has uh, won many awards, so I won't read all of them. And I think the most important one that he won was the Ralph Hirschman Award uh, by the American Chemical Society for a, a very uh, uh, for a scientist who has contributed a lot to protein science or peptide science. And the first winner of that award was, in fact, Bruce Merrifield, <laughs> his postdoctoral supervisor. So that's the very prestigious award. And then uh, he also has won many other awards, you know, uh, the Vincent du Vignot Award in 1986, the Rao McInerney Award in 2003, which is awarded by American Peptide Society for Outstanding Contribution in Peptide science, Sciences. So he's one of the world-class leaders in peptide sciences. And here in NTU, uh, James has been winning some very big research grants. He just told me that he won two very big ones, you know, uh, $10 million each that is keeping his lab going. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure many new discoveries will come out of there. So recently I read about his work on... Uh, Blue pea. I also have a blue pea plant growing in my garden that I use to extract the blue color. Huh? Uh, very good for making nyonya kueh, they say. Huh? But there's a lot of science behind it, uh, which James will tell us about. So today, James will share with us his uh, fantastic work on super glue from nature. Thank you, James. Thank you, Su Ying, for very kind words. And I must say, Su Ying is really one of the movers and shakers that bring NTU science to the international front. 
So we should give him a big, big hand. Okay. You're right. I was I met him first at NUS. Okay. And and um, that that's more than twenty years ago. And time goes by very fast. Twenty years later, I didn't realize I'm still in Singapore. But uh, let me first of all thank all of you for coming because this is getting uh, 4.30 time, you know. Now today I'm going to talk about superglues. Basically it's a ligase which is isolated from a very common plant, the blue pea, which is all over the campus and all over Singapore. In fact, Suying is correct. The blue color is used in making vodka, you know, and making tea. You can use for eyeshadow, you can use for food, and so on and so forth. And the blue pea flower contains a peptide called cyclotide. It's a cyclic peptide. Very stable. And you, 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 if you have blue pea flower in the vodka, from, you leave it from 10 typically the peptide is still there. Now the, the glue that make that cyclic peptide is what the subject is about today. We have a research center called SYNC, S-Y-N-C, which stands for Synthetic Enzyme and Natural Products Center. Basically, it combined two of my background together, one on synthetic enzyme, one on natural product. The majority of my lab work on natural products, but today I'm going to focus only on synthetic enzymes. Okay, before I said that, now one of the things that the natural product we do are highly biased. We are biased only on peptides, not small molecules. And these peptides must be as stable as small molecules. Because after all, you boil the medicine. If it decomposes to boiling, then it's no longer useful. It's irrelevant, whatever biological property we, we find. So we're looking at things that are stable as small molecules in cooking, in boiling, in the stomach, and they will absorb. But this is something that, that, that is the subject of another talk. Now, the reason why is that we want to go well, so-called healthy aging. We want people to be happy at the age of 60 to 85. Now, remember, the average age of Singaporean now, the aging is 82. It's about a quarter of them are at the age of 82. So we want them to be happy, uh, uh, healthy. Now, aging is a societal burden because if you get old, you need two, at least two person to support you in terms of services as well as a lot of income, okay? So the aging society like Singapore, Japan, Korea, and to certain things China now, well, Hong Kong is too small to, to think, but it's Hong Kong, they now become facing this problem, aging. So we were looking for healthy aging. We want to look at biological solutions, things that new products to reduce cellular stress. The major thing we're interested in is stress, because stress really is the cause of problem. You're afraid of getting old, you'll get sick. You're afraid of getting sick, you'll get sick. Okay, so and so we're afraid of your children, you'll get sick. Okay. So in turn, we want to reduce the onset of disease associated with aging, cancer chronic metabolic disease such as diabetes, arthritis. Now you notice arthritis is increasing very rapidly simply because we don't move as much, okay? So we'll, we'll show, show you the number drug, number one drug in the market is against arthritis. So this is a, a typical, a very uh, um, curve, age-related, arthritis number one, and the number one drug is against arthritis, okay? Heart diseases, cancer, diabetes, this four, 
and we're looking for natural product against this, 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 this diseases. Now, but today I'm going to switch totally. <laughs> we're going to talk about ligases as super good. Things that this enzyme will stick things on a particular position of a protein. Okay, with exquisite site specificity. Now, they make peptide bonds, okay? With, and the reason is that because biologic now become a major source of sales income for pharmaceutical company. 201A, it account for 24%. Biologic meaning peptide, protein, antibodies, and so on and so forth. So it's no longer small molecule. The big income comes from biologics. So peptide bond, I, I just say one a few words because this is a general lecture. Peptide bond come from amino acid joined together. It's just a dehydration reaction. It's a carboxylic acid, but mean minus water. You can make peptide bond in strong sulfuric acid with dehydrating agent, but the body doesn't use water, okay? Now, why the peptide bond is interesting because it's stay very stable and it's reversible. It's reversible because the protease will cut very nicely. So how does peptide bonds are made in natural system? The most well known is that they form big complexes because they are, trans they are controlled by genes. This is ribosomal synthesis. You can see the messenger RNA, the tRNA, a lot of protein cofactor. Very tightly controlled. Because if you make a wrong peptide bond, you get rejected. If you make a new peptide or protein, it is perceived as a toxic substance. Your body reacts with it, the immune surveillance. So making peptide bond is a no-no. It only for complexes. Now bacteria have another system called the non-ribosomal synthesis. It doesn't involve messenger RNA, but it's still a bit complex. It goes through sequentially for a thou ester, it go thou ester template, and it needs to be activated by ATP. So you add one amino acid to a time until you reach it. And this is the first antibiotic ever known. It's called tyrosidine. It was isolated by Du Bois in 1939 before penicillin. So this is the first antibiotic. And the chemistry was, was the, the mechanism elucidated a certain part by Chris Lipman, who won the Nobel Prize in 1953 for discovering ATP. So the reason why he invented because this required ATP, okay? So now making peptide, you know, is now very complex system, require multiple enzymes and ATP. So is there any way you can make peptide bond without the complex, without ATP? Yes, there are, okay? So there is another one, it's called protein splicing. Protein splicing involves a free component, an intain, which is act as an enzyme that put this part and this part together to form a new protein, and then intain get kicked out. So the index is in, embedded into the protein, and this is done by, done, done by expression system. Now I want to point out the junction of this thing is always cysteine serine journey, cysteine journey cysteine. So this is very, very important, okay? Intain was discovered accidentally, basically, by two groups. One group is by Tom Stevens' group. He probably write better. He got a paper in science. The second group is by the Japanese group. It doesn't write as good, it goes in JPC. Okay, same year. So, what's the mechanism? The mechanism is that these two extain, intain come together. The intain serve as a template to pull these two together, go for a series of acyl shifts. So one of the things is the branch intermediate. So I want you to know this. The big protein now just position these two to go for trans acidification and then an O to N acyl shift. So the whole thing is proximity driven chemistry, entropy driven. I did something stupid.
Thank you. And anyway, thank you very much. Let me go back one word. So this mechan this the mechanism was was um, elucidated in 1993 by Ming Su, and uh, he worked in the New England Bao Lab. Now, New England Bao Lab was founded by a Nobel Prize winner named Richard Robert. Now, I'm bringing Richard Robert because Richard Robert is it Richard Robert. Uh, uh, Richard Roberts, who came to uh, NTU quite a number of times, is one of the panel. And it is called messenger RNA splicing. And that was when he was in, in, at, at Cold Spring Harbor. This is 1977. Two groups, Richard Roberts and Philip Sharp at MIT discover messenger RNA and splicing. So what is messenger RNA splicing? It involves both exon, exon one on both and the intron link them together. Okay, it's like this. And then this is excised out. So you look at the mechanism, it's very similar to protein splicing. Both pinch is excluded. The intron is play the role of intake. Okay. So we look at the mechanism. Again, this is, X, this is protein splicing. This position them go through the first so-called N to S axial shift from a branch intermediate, and this is come out to form a peptide contain N, okay, a thou ester or ester, and this is five member ring from this acyl group, and this collapse spontaneously to give you the peptide. So this is total proximity or entropy driven reaction. So um, there's another thing, the similarity is that intane, if you read it, is self-catalyzed and it used one time. After that, it doesn't regenerate, it's far away, it's just like the intron. It really is not an enzyme because it doesn't regenerate, it's embedded Position, two part together, form the bond, go for a bunch of acyl transfer reaction. Okay, now I'm going to stop this temporarily. And I go back to chemical synthesis of peptide protein. Bruce Merrifield discovered solid phase peptide synthesis. And he won the Nobel Prize in 1984. And this is the American Chemical Society said this is a top 10 invention. Now, he was the only Nobel recipient in 1984. So how did it start? He started with a shaker. He built a shaker in the machine and then it just shake, 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 and we still use some of those shakers, okay, to mix all the synthesis. Then in his garage, he built an automated synthesizer because solid phase, the thing about solid phase is because it attached to a reagent and reagent grow, any excess reagent can be washed away. So it's able to do automation. Now the, the, the important thing about solid phase synthesis because it opened up to nucleotide synthesis, affinity chromatography, and the whole thing, okay? So you can look at the first generation peptide synthesis, it's huge. You see this drum? This is a musical drum. And this is drum usually, in, in, if you go to Chicago, you have a big fountain, okay? This is a programmer. So we bought it from the, from the um, Chicago, uh, uh, which gives a time that certain time that you know, then come out the fountain. So at that time, I joined Rockefeller University in 1976. Okay. The building changed now, but it's beautiful. On the east side, a 17 acre donated by the Rockefeller family. East River. Now they rebuilt, they built up onto here on the FDR drive. And Bruce have occupied the fourth floor. Okay. Each floor in this hall has won Nobel Prizes. So the Rockefeller have 20, uh, 
Oh, I, I, I think the number is probably incorrect. It's 27, okay. But something like that, a small university, but each floor. Jerry Edelman is on the first floor, and the, the lysosome is also on the first floor. Stanford Moore, the sequencing of rap, I think, is on also uh, on, the, on the fifth floor, Maryville on the fourth floor, and so on and so forth. The animal virus people on the second floor. The not, uh, 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 so, so, So Merrifield write down everything. So he came up with the idea of solar phase in 1959. So he wrote a notebook in 1959, the data entry. Now I want to thank Chung Fa. Chung Fa, I asked Chung Fa to send me this particular page. Mrs. Merrill gave me a duplicate of his notebook. So I gave it to Chung Fa and I forgot it this morning. I said, gee, could you give me the first page? So he wrote down, there's a need for rapid, okay, quantitative, so on and so forth, synthesis and they were attached to solid support. He was asked to make a, a peptide, very small, only six residue. And it took him a long time because he had to couple them, crystallize them, purify them, chromatography, so he wanted. For four years, he had no result. Now I'll come back to this part again because Chong Fa experienced the same thing, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, so he wrote down, wrote this thing. In 1960, we published a paper in JACS. And there's a, there's a, there's a, so this is the original slide from him. So he's going on beat, the black, the, 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 this, end, this is the N-terminal, this is a, a peptide, it grow on the chain from C, to C onward, and it's protected. So at the end, you cleave it from the beat, and this is a protecting group. So it's stepwise synthesis. He won the Nobel Prize in 1984. And of course, when you run the Nobel Prize, you want people to clean your backyard, it's called leaf wrecking party. So every year he asks people, he has a lot of tree in his brain, can you come to a few people will attend. But you won the Nobel Prize, the whole group will come. <laughs> uh, everybody, okay. So this is me sometime somewhere there. Bruce is somewhere here. And this is wife Libby who just passed away. Bruce is somewhere here. In 1982, I was also, Bruce also said, look, we can start an, uh, a lab independent. And this is one of the, the students who will be now with Lily. I have hair at that time, so I want to make sure that I didn't bond with our hair, okay? Um, so, since I got independent, the thing that you don't want to do is work on solar phase would compete with Bruce Merrifield. So I said, look, maybe we can work on something that doesn't need to require protecting group. No protecting group. Can you couple a peptide protein without protecting group? At that time, you'll remember, recombinant DNA just come up. Recombinant DNA produce proteins. So maybe we can use it as a building block. Can we link unprotected peptide to it? Now this is very difficult because protecting Protein contain many side chain, amine, carboxylic acid. Can you join them specifically? Now this project is given to Professor, uh, Professor Liu Chung Fa who's sitting in the audience. He joined me in 1999 or something like that. Is it 1999? 1989, around there. Or even, I, okay. For two or three years, no result. Absolute result, okay? And then we come up, we come in conference in 1993, we, we said, look, there's a way for us to, to form peptide bond between unprotected peptide in water. No coupling reagent, no protecting group. And this has come up in two paper, okay, in JCS and, 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 and uh, PNAS. Now the reviewer doesn't believe we, we can do that. So this thing takes more than a year to review back and forth, back and forth, because new thing is difficult. So the chemistry is very simple. So look, this is protective peptide, this is unprotected peptide, or protein, doesn't matter. You have carboxylic group, you have amine in there, you have amine, so on and so forth, thiol. So hopefully we can link this together. If we link it together, this nitrogen will be activated, it will be, it will be close to this acyl group. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And this branch intermediate, will collapse spontaneously to form the amide bond. It's as simple as that, okay? But the question is, how do you make these two react? 
Okay. Okay, in, in water, because you can't use condensing agent, there's something like 150 reaction to make peptide bond in chemistry, but they're all protected. Okay, so what we did is, the first one we use is aldehyde chemistry. The aldehyde will react at the N-terminal of serine cysteine tuning because this contains a one, two, substituted. And they form a five membrane. Once they form a five membrane, this nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, will, re will collapse to give you the, pe the peptide bond. Now, uh, subsequently, you can, you can remove this thing by using exit if this is a aromatic aldehyde, okay? So this is serine tuning, okay? It was published in 2013. So basically, this three residue is equivalent to intane because it I'll bank these two group together. Okay. So this is a mini intake. Intake is about 300 amino acids. So here is only one, two, three. One, two, three. So this is really an interesting uh, intake. So there's several things. You can also make this an ester, a thou ester, with acid, this would exchange, or serenium. So they would form a thou ester and rearrange, so on and so forth. So this type of uh, rearrangement, if you look at it, this is what we propose, we, 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 a concept of Prof. Liu come up with, okay, 1993. And this is what was determined by protein splicing. You see the mechanism is identical, except this using a protein, and we use a chemical approach. In the, in the media, same, the last step is identical. Because last step, you, you form this one, two, three, four, five, collapse, you form the peptide bond, same as this one, one, two, three, four, five. So this in the media and this in the media is identical. Okay, so the intent uh, protein splicing is same as our so-called entropic ligation. Now, of course, we're not smart enough. We didn't know about protein the splicing at that, that time. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't um, milk on it. If we would have milk it on it, it would be much, much better. The protein splicing become very big and the mechanism is very similar to what we have come up, so-called proximity-driven entropic ligation. Okay, so this is story, basically, tell you that you have two unprotected peptide, the protecting group. If the end term is serine, cysteine, and tuning, you can go through ligation using entropic method. I'm going to tell you a second story, which related to what we're doing now. So we have come up with another ligation we call the ASX splicing. And this ligation requires the recognition signal at the C-terminal. This is C-terminal specific. And one of the things we use, this supergroup is called butylase, is that ligase. Okay, so this, the second part of the story is that the first part, this thing, the second part is only developed only at NTU about four or five years ago. So how does it work? The A acid ligation is very simple. So this is a biosynthetic. Your precursor, it be cut by a butylase type like enzyme, asparagine uh, 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 endopeptidase. And then the ligase will join them to make a cyclic peptide. And you see quite a bit. In the blue pea flower, you have a lot of cyclic peptide. And that's why we can isolate this one. And ligase is not the only one. You'll find the whole iso isoform, that some of them act totally as a protease, okay? So what is a ligase? The ligase is basically map pep peptide bond. So link this thing together, just this protein, okay? You have recognition signal with NHV to make the peptide bond. Now, the opposite, the yin and yang, is breaking it. So the protease break it, the endoprotease, 
cut specific asparagine to give you two fragments. So we call this thing, this direction, a pile, real pile. They make peptide bond. This one we call AEP, okay? Now, but as of today, there are very few ligase known. I'm talking about ligase that stand alone, you can put in fast and add reaction, okay? And it doesn't require ATP. There are very few known. But in contrast, we know the proteases, breaking peptide bond, there are at least 400,000. So there's a really, really big difference in terms of what we know about proteases. And so, so ligase in, must be controlled as standalone, and it's most likely they're toxic. Because you, you, if the joint bonds together, then this is a problem for aging, for all kinds of diseases, right? So ligase are really well controlled. And it's compartmentalized to a certain extent. I'm going to skip this two slides quickly. AEP is found in all plants, period. And it's played a very important role. And it's also known as vascular processing enzyme or lagunme. Okay. And in animal, in animal, it's called lagunmate. It's very important for disease progression because Particular, this has been using for cancer marker because when you grow cancer, you need AEP to cut it into pieces. And so this is, when you're cancer, this is a, a marker for cancer. So, is this acid ligation a new story or not? Now I put in quotation because it's not in literature yet and I'm telling you the first time publicly, there's such thing as ASX ligation. Well, in 1979, I attended a lecture by uh, Cunningham and, and Jerry Edelman. Jerry Edelman won the Nobel Prize for sequencing uh, uh, the light chain or the, the, the antibody, okay, using my enoma protein. And he was a student at Rockefeller at the, at the 60s. In 73, he won the Nobel Prize. So he won the Nobel Prize very, very early. And they find very interesting, this particular con A have a circular permutation. So in that one, one of them, the an amino group is here, the carboxylic group is here, and then that one is a carboxyl, they, they make circular proteins. Similar se sequences. So the cDNA was reported in 1985, okay, by Carrington. The mechanism was reported in the paper in 1993, I believe, somewhere here. 1994, I'm sorry, 1994, by Wong Min and Hugh Jones. Now, this is the big problem, Wong Min. Is his last name Min or Wong? So a lot of people get confused, they cite it, is it Wong Min or Min Wong? So, some, some, so, so, so I, I, apparently, it's a big problem. Anyway, he finds that the splicing magnum A is catalyzed by asparagine endopeptidase. So this is a mechanism. These are asparagines. This is a precursor protein. You'll see that the two yellow eventually switch places and join together. The intervening sequence are all cut out. And they all cut up as asparagine. So first asparagine, second, third, fourth, okay. They join together to form this piece. So what is the mechanism? Clearly asparagine is a recognition signal. It's the asparagine endopeptidase. But no one have isolated the ligase. They know it cut. They also know that they join, but how does it join? It's not known. And for 20 years, very difficult. No one have isolated until a couple of my students at, at NTU, April Iso from Blue Peepel, is the first ligase to isolate from Blue Peepel. So we can now complete the story. So to, to tell Su Ying the story is that this thing, the Blue Peepel flower, joined, recognized the asparagine histidine valine that's coupled more residue. 
This particular call using Malay, the, the, the Malaysian name called, we call butylase. And then it, it, it biosynthesizes cyclopeptide. Now, Su Ying was asking me, you know, how is your thing stable? You can see that a lot of cross link. This, this molecule is heavily cross linked. And that's why you can use it for eyeshadow and, and cook it, okay? So this is, this is the milestone. So circular fermentation was first mentioned by Bruce Cunningham and Jerry Edelman. Could see DNA confirmed in 1985, okay? So we know that Japanese AEP and the, and the, <clears throat> the asparagine the peptide is involved in corn A, okay? And then, um, and, 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 and it's mediated by AEP. The, the mechanism structure of AEP at that time, uh, the reason is by uh, Brent Stetter in Austria, but we close the loop in 9214. We find the ligase. So this is the, so this is ASX splicing. What, what we propose. Okay, so the other ligase in plant two. Okay, any bacteria, any mammal, they all cyclopeptide. If you have a cyclopeptide, most likely there's a ligase there. But no one have find a ligase from here. This plant, okay, it's got all peptides, mostly protein rich and alanine rich, very hydro hydrophobic. It's five to nine amino acids, okay. And this is fungi, and this is bacteria. I'm gonna talk a little bit about circular bacterial scene, and this is the one that we we isolate in proteas. Now there's a whole group of natural product. In fact, a lot of people working on it, and it's called RIPS. RIPS stands for ribosomal synthesized and post-translational modified peptide. RI here, P, P, okay? So it really take only a few words, okay? So I, I inspired me to Call the, our research is going to sink. So if you can call RIPS, it's going to call our sink, synthetic enzyme, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so biosynthesis, RIPS is quite well known. You can find out the leader sequence and recognition sequence. And you can do bio mining, okay, because you can find them and they go through, they, 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 they all the enzymes stuck on the sequence and modify the, the, modify the, the core peptide to give you post-translational product. Now, what does the post-translational product look like? You can see there's so many. Most of these peptides, you wouldn't recognize it. You would think that the so-called non-ribosomal synthesis. It turned out to be ribosomal synthesis. Okay, so I don't have an example. So there are other ligases, not too many of them, okay. Uh, 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 Sautases is transamidase, and this is a group of serine like uh, uh, ligases. And this is a group that we have been working on uh, in, in our lab. So let me, Julian, I think left already. Julian, we collaborate with Julian on the structure of butylase. And this is data taken by Brent Stetter in 2013. And basically, the butylase one have very high homology with each other, okay? And the plant had 30, about 40% similarity to human and belong to so-called C13 family of CD clan, okay? So basically, if a triad, the triad is called cysteine, is the, from the thyroid ester, the asparagine, and the histidine somewhere there. And CN, is, this is highly preserved. You have an oxy anion hole in here, catalytic triad. So this is the structure of a, the protease. Surprisingly, the ligase is structurally similar. So how does it work? So why is one the directionality? Why one breaks the peptide bond, the other make it? Now. Julian is supposed to give us the answer, and many of my, our students picture is supposed to give the answer. But the short answer is this. Most likely is that the protease 
the solvent exposure, the water goes in somehow. It goes to the active and hydrolyze the peptidine in the media. While the ligase have a little bit of protection from the water, shield the water from hydrolysis, and allow the amine nucleophile to come in to form the peptide bond. Now, I hope we'll give you the answer uh, uh, pretty soon. I'm going to skip this thing because uh, basically it's just the crystal structure from, from different groups uh, from our lab. The butylase one have isoform. The first one is ligase. The second one is a protease. Okay. In fact, a lot of them are protease. So now that 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 the acid ligation makes sense because you can have that dual role. In fact, most of the peptide, the ligase we obtain, have dual function. At different pH, the blue one is hydrolysis, the red one is cyclic, the ligation. So at different pH, at a city pH, it cuts. At slightly near neutral pH, it joins. So it depends what compartment and what condition it does, it cut and join. Okay, so we have this um, so-called 1000 plant project. We look into watermelon seed, cucumber seed, sesame seed, all kinds of plants, flower plants, and look at whether they have ligase. Most of them have ligase activity. Okay. I'm going to skip this one because it just tells you the, that we have solved quite a number of structures. Okay, so let me tell you a little about progress on structure determination. We were able to express quite a number of uh, 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 ligates from different plant species. We determined the substrate specificity. And there's a pH jump to modulate to a certain extent the protease and ligase dual activity of, of, of this ligase. So it depends on which compartment. So acidic amount and cut. And it turns out these proteins, the cymogen, the activation is auto-activated. It depends on pH. So at acidic pH, it cut, and then become a ligase. Then it cuts some more, or it joins some more. So we are still working it out. Now, so far, no one has obtained a crystal structure of active form. Because once an active, we are not able to get, we only get the cymogen form. Butylase one has three activity. The first is cy it is mixed cyclase, cyclase, it joins to end together. It ligase between these two molecules. And the third one is it transaminase. It will make the transaminase make the thing. Now we have a visitor here who is interested to make fish balls and artificial crab meat. Because as you know, you can change the textures of those things by making it more Texture. So this cross-linking reaction. So perhaps one of these days, instead of making white teal blue, they can also make fish for more fancy. Okay. So I'm going to quickly tell you about butylase one as a representative example. It's linkage specific, but broad specificity for N-terminal nucleophile. So we do a computerial library. We're using the example with two, two peptides, the P1 site is always asparagine or aspartic acid. You can't change it. The P2 site, OK, oh, the, the P1 prime site, the a nucleophile, except almost all 20 amino acids. The P2 require hydrophobic amino acids. Now, the other side, 2, 3, 4, doesn't seem to be cared that much. So this is the red linkage. It required asparagine, aspartic acid. The second amino acid doesn't care. The third one is hydrophobic. So this becomes the recognition signal for butylase one. That's given the specificity. And of course, other AEP or other ligase might have different recognition signal and specificity. So there's still a lot to learn. But surprisingly, Surprisingly, butylase would take B amino acid. This is very unusual. So they, they, this asparagine, HB, the, you keep this thing, 
The rest is D amino acid. You can make cyclic D amino acid except the asparagine. But this is quite interesting to make antibiotics or other proteins because D amino acid cannot be cut. And you make much more stable version of it. Okay, so I just give you some example. Butylase one by far is still the gold standard. It's very far. At the substrate level, so this is a linear peptide in five minute HPLC <coughs> cyclide using 0 0.002 mole equivalent of enzyme. So this is a 33 amino acid. Same thing here. You can see cyclides extremely fast, also in 0 0.002 mole equivalent. So we can go on and on. It cyclides extremely fast. So this is very, 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 very good. So how fast it compared with other standalone? So the other one published is Sortase A, which you can buy commercially. Sortase A, this is done by Anton and all in JBC, it cyclized a green fluorescent protein. You require one mole of enzyme versus one mole of um, substrate. And it takes 24 hours. Butylase will take one mole of one to 250 and it will require only a quarter of an hour to completion. So the, the improvement is 24,000 fold. So it's much fast. In this case, it's very important. And I tell you how important it is later on. You use very little enzyme, you can do much more work. So this is compared to free, the known uh, the PCY1 from plant, the, the KCAT is one per hour. PETG is from bacteria, it's extremely slow. Okay, with solderies I talked about, and this is um, about 1.5 1, 1 billion times faster than, 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 than some of the enzymes. Okay, all right. The second thing is, so because Rod told me this is a chemistry thing, so I have to tell you some chemistry. All right, um, you can make all kinds of circular protein, but can you make natural product synthesis? I think that is an important point. So we, the very large series of uh, uh, antibiotics called the circular bacteriocin. This is the largest cyclic peptide. So assembly amino acid and it's very difficult to make because the red one is the stretch is the hydrophobic amino acid. So when you make it by solar phase, they aggregate. You can't make it. So I have a postdoc can make it by solar phase, can work. We do fragment synthesis, it doesn't work. Nothing work. Okay. Now this is a difference between with the circle uh, bacterial scene, as bacterial scene here, and this well, you dip it and the mold doesn't grow. So this is really good way of preserving it. Okay. Now, um, so this is a cyclic peptide. The natural native cycle is between methionine and tryptophan, and tryptophan 70. This is the natural site. So for us, we look for the second site contain asparagine. We make a linear precursor, which contain Start of, I'm sorry, valine 18 right here, and of asparagine 17. And we will link it in there. Of course, NHV is obligatory. And we put a bunch of lysine in there. Remember, this is quite insoluble. Okay. And after we make it, we fold it, and then we put butylate to cyclize it. Now, this is uh, HPLC for those who are interested. In so that we did do the work, okay, and um, HPLC unfolded the linear because um, you fold it, it shifted, the molecular weight is the same using mass back, and then you cyclize it, you can see a lot of peak, but turn out these peaks is based on the crude extract. Okay, so this is a crude extract, and this is the AS48. Okay. So efficient, but you should be impressed with now how solar phase change. Using microwave, using microwave um, 
uh, technique. The synthesis of the precursor only takes six hours, the 75 amino acids. So it's really fast, okay? The reporting takes five hours, the cycle takes one hour, so you can complete in one day. So I have three postdoc working for one year of no product. For a good student, you can get this done in one day. So there's a big difference is how technology change, okay? Now the second thing is kind of interesting is because this is traceless. Because it cycles as asparagine, you can't tell whether it's chemical synthesis or biosynthesis. And of course this is both chemical followed by an enzymatic cyclization. Okay, why this is important? Because this is against monocytogenes, which is growing cold. So for those who are pregnant, they're not supposed to eat cold cut because it's contaminated and this causes um, problem, okay, for pregnant women. So this is quite good uh, in terms of the activity. And it's also active against quite a number of uh, resistant, uh, antibody resistant viruses. So it's broad spectrum. And the nice thing about this doesn't have uh, bacterial resistance, uh, antibody resistance. Okay, the second thing is you have a ligase. What else can you do? One other thing we can do is to make drugs, precision by manufacturing of peptide protein. Now, um, eight of the 10 top selling drugs in 92017 are biologics. That means peptide protein and monoclonal antibody. And similar trend exists in 201 and slightly continue. It accounts for about 20% of total sale. Now, as any time you make buy a monoclonal antibody, it's expensive. Very, very expensive. Now, it's interesting, a lot of these things are also target cancer. Cancer is one of the biggest problems. And if you look at number one, Humira, this is against interferon ga ga uh, uh, gamma. It's a monoclonal antibody. In 2017, the sale is $16 billion. Came up right here. So if you look at down the line, MAB meaning monoclonal antibody, bio meaning <coughs> biologic proteins. You can see, okay? So, There's something like a thousand monoclonal antibody. Some of them are expiring. Herceptin is a good one against cancer. And so there's a time to, to perhaps to make peptide body drug conjugate. And for chemists, this is a golden time because there's so many monoclonal antibody you can, you can get. So one way of the make peptide body drug conjugate is by chemical conjugation. You link a toxin to it and toxin go everywhere. You don't, you can't control it. Okay, so with butylase, it can only join either N terminal or C terminal. So you get homogeneous product. And this is quite nice. Linger, you can get quite nice. Uh, so with the expiration of monoclonal antibody, you just conjugate, and this is not no longer biosimilar. It's called biobetter because now we can get homogeneous product. It's better. It decreases R and D courses, improve yield, produce homogeneous product, and reduce research time. Here's some example. Okay, you can link these things to very specific position. We published it uh, uh, last year, and um, you can link it to not just protein. You can link DNA to it. Now, uh, for all you know, the splicing is a major thing for molecular biology. You insert a foreign gene in the joint, okay. Now with the CRISPR-Cas9, you can put this thing in there and study the, a lot of the, the whole genome, okay, so on and so forth. So this is quite interesting. But let's look by antibody drug content. The antibody, of course, is the largest, about 150, to very small one, to the one that we saw you, the so-called noctin, about 44,000. So this a scaffold which you can link drug to it. So any of this scaffold, you can link drug and target different diseases. 
Okay, so how do you, so with this kind of protein, what, what do you do? You can put the protein and you put NHV, a prop butylase, then you link together. This is at the N terminal. Or you can see terminal, you can put NHV at the NC terminal and put the peptide to it and you can get. So this is quite simple. Where is site specific? Okay, so I'm going to um, go to an area, environmental. Now for most of you, you use detergent. Detergent contains a lipase. Lipase basically dissolves fat. Or you think about the environment, you have oil, oil pollution, okay? You want to dissolve the, 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 the fat, the oil. What we are interested in is, can we make them more stable? Okay, for environmental concern. So I'm showing you some example. For example, phytase, which is insoluble, but if you hydrolyze phytase, become phosphate, it becomes soluble and releases phosphate. This is very good as a fertilizer. So you get some of these things, add a little bit of enzyme in there, you get to, your plant go extremely well for those who like the garden. So one of the ways you can do it is when you cyclize it or modify it, you can see it's much more stable. So this is a thermal shift, about 10 degrees after cyclization of phytase. So if you make it more stable and uh, we're in high temperature, you require less enzyme. And, 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 and. So this is another uh, use. Another thing is labeling of live cells to make vaccine, to look at metabolic pathways. Now, because this is Moni from Chongfa's lab, you can modify protein, contain probes or carbohydrates, and he does all kinds of things. And I will show you this, this particular slide. I have to make sure I did it right. Oh, I can't, I can't get it done. Oh, never mind. So it's supposed to tell you the label, then the red, the, the macro will eat up all the green. Uh, so you can study all, kind, all kinds of things with it. Now, I'm almost done. So you can label things on N terminal and C terminal. How about in the middle of the sequence? So we've expanded genetic code, you can do that. This is work by Pete Schultz, okay, David Liu, and so on and so forth. And you can see that, look, and, and, and I forgot to uh, put in Chung Fa and his uh, co-worker, I, I apologize, okay, I missed one slide. Okay, so you can link this, this particular protein, okay, put a fluorescent label in there, or put a biotin, or so on and so forth, and put this into a peptide. So you can label it, and you can see using facts, you can, you can see this all labeled up. Now he go one step further. He'll make a green fluorescent protein, make it cyclic in the beginning, okay? And then put in this lysine type. And this contain a double bond, this contain a triple bond, this contain a uh, azi, and you can do click reaction and so on and so forth. So after you cyclize it, then you, you link this thing to the side chain, the solid support, and so on and so forth. So here's some example that he, he, he used. So the HPLC source is very good. Now he put it into superfish. So the cycle make it more stable. It does, okay? So the green one is the linear one, the yellow one. So you can see the green one still maintained after three days in the uh, uh, superfish embryo. Now, of course, you can make it with the chemical ligation because we can convert this peptide to a thio ester, and then thio ester, this is thio ester, then you can do chemical ligation. Here's one example. You can take this thing with the NHV to make butylate with the thio ester, to react with cysteine, native ligation, thio ester, put in a biotin probe, and then you can use sauté 8 and link the other part. So you can use 
chemistry, two enzyme, three enzyme system, and now we have developed butylates with different recognition signal. So you can do quite a bit of thing, everything in one port. And that is one of the uh, pre, uh, pretty thing, using enzyme chemistry. So I just want to make a conclusion. So we have developed entropic ligation and ASX splicing for site-specific superglue for precision by uh, manufacturing. Now because this using water, doesn't using organic, and it's friendly environmental, so it fit the green chemistry. But I want to conclude that for 26 years, our, our lab, starting with Chung Fang, who, who work on it, protecting group free ligation. And we first started with N terminals ligation, specific for cysteine serine tuning only, and then end up with another one, C terminal ligation, using ligases, that's ASX. So this complete a circle, you can now join things in N terminal, C terminal, as well as the side chain. Now, of course, the, um, the big thing that the ligase is that you can do all kinds of things, chemical biology, late life cell, synthetic biology for post-translational modification, antibody drug conjugate, peptide protein, protein fusion, and so on and so forth. So there are quite a number of applications which I didn't talk about. So the take home lesson is this. This is a take home lesson. Molecular biology is, after all, chemistry. As I show you, protein splicing is based on entropic activation. This is the template put in the right places. The ASIC splicing, most likely, is also chemistry. It, it positions everything correctly. All right? So the intense splicing is similar to the entropic, and you could it's similar to mRNA. NRM splicing, I didn't go into it, go for a whole serial trans acidification. Okay. I would like to thank my collaborator. This is an old photograph. My collaborator, a lot of them from NTU, including Julian, Ho Young, Chung Fa, Ding Sun, and so on and so forth. A number of my postdocs, a number of my students. And plus about 300 undergrads. So every summer, we have about 40 to 70 undergrad, okay, who do uh, 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 work, and a lot of them do Chinese medicine, herbs. So we study a lot of herbs, and they grind, they filter, they assay. So with that, I want to thank them, them all of them, and thank all of you for your attention. Thank you. Should all of us now want to work for JNN. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for questions. Let me start with a couple. Uh, you know, the chefs have been using uh, enzyme called transglutaminase yes. as a as a ligase yes. to bind the meat together. Right. And they produce it with bacteria. Right. How much of the butylase can you extract from uh, goofy plant? Not, not, not enough. Not enough, is it? So but going to but this family, remember, this family is a, a thioprotease family. Papain, for example, yeah. would chop things up, the myo, okay, make it tenderized. Right. But eventually, we can make it also joint. Remember that. Uh, okay, so if we understand how this works, we can certainly make papain and learn how to join. Yeah. Okay. And I think eventually this is a, you have a very good question because can we compete with trans, transglutamase to do all this? Yeah. They form isopeptide form between lysine and glutamate. Time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah, I, I don't know yet. A lot of that yes, yes. And it's quite cheap now. Kilo tons, I would show. Kilo the, tons, yeah. yeah. The bacteria to produce it. Yes. So maybe you can clone the gene in the bacteria. And uh, I'm counting on my students and postdocs to give me kilo tons of, of these things, okay? Eventually, yeah. yeah. That's, That's really yeah. Great. That, yeah. So, better fish balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use that for ping pong ball. Yeah. I'm sure students will want to work on it because plenty of money in there. 
Not only that, it's tasty, you know? Uh, so. Can you use the same process as they produce the transglutaminase? That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for. We haven't, we have one, one scientist in our lab want to do this, okay? Yeah. And we're trying to model system. I said, easy, just get some fish and just see whether, mix it up and see whether it, it becomes bouncy and cook it, right? And chow chow, you, 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 you beat the hell out of it, okay? Yeah. So now you don't beat it and see whether you can get it um, yeah. uh, very bouncy and airy. But also this enzyme, you know, after cooking, you want to destroy it, but your butylase is so stable. No, no, butylase is not stable. Not stable. You, you, the, the butylase product, whatever it is in plant, is very stable. But butylase is an enzyme 300 ton amino acids long. It falls apart. <laughs> totally falls apart. It just becomes food. So those, I was telling a lot of people, look, peptide can be food and can be drug. If it gets degraded, it's food. If it doesn't get degraded, it's struck. Okay, so we're working both the degraded part, which is the enzyme, and the non-degraded part, which is the drug. Yeah. Okay, question. Come on, you have a tough question for James, right? First time you hear him talk. <laughs> How much butylase one can you extract from this uh, butylase uh, shoe? We have the blue pea in our herb garden. For those who doesn't know, we have a beautiful herb garden, which grow this thing. And we usually get it from the peas, that the blue shoot that come out. And with that, we can get something like 50 milligram per kilogram wet weight, or something like that, for very good. For the first startup, maybe five milligrams. So it depends on how good the postdoc is, okay? And who is doing it. Um, and how long can you stay in the cold room, okay? Um, so um, it's a test for students, okay? Whoever put on enough lab, lab coat and stay in the cold room, get it done, then you get a lot more, okay? Um, uh, Uh, thank you. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, is is there a is is there a goal here to use this to replace uh, chemical synthesis of peptides to join, say, uh, small uh, um, units of peptides together for protein synthesis? Your question is: Is there what is there a is, is there a goal in mind to, to use this to replace chemical synthesis of, uh, of, of small proteins or small peptides? So using these uh, enzymes to uh, synthesize artificial proteins and peptides. Basically, you can do whatever you want. You can do nanomaterial, you can do peptide, you can do protein. You can, you can do really, I didn't cite enough example for you. But you can do whatever. All you need is NHB on one end, and then you can link the other side. Okay, I just I show you the cyclic bacterial scene, which is 70 amino acids, which you can consider to be a protein because it contains five helix bundle. It folds extremely well. Okay, or you can make much bigger. You can make circular phytase, which is close to 400 amino acids long. So I would consider those proteins. Okay, and, and certain. Now you can make uh, people using uh, hydrogel now or doing other things, nano things, uh, using this, 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 this method. So the, the ligase doesn't care what is on the other end. All you need is NHV and the end terminal come in and join. That's it. And they kick out the histidine dating dipeptide. And doesn't even care that it's coming as a D amino acid. This is the neat part. I think. So you can make peptide, you can make protein, you can make. I didn't show you that we can make the polymerization. We can make pep, small peptide polymerized to make a cyclic peptide of different size, which, which is published. Okay. And, 
and, and Chong Ba is working on transferrin, which is really even bigger. Label it and go into the cell and look at endocytosis and so on and so forth. And I said you can, my coworkers, some of the things are working on how this thing incorporates the genome, okay? So on so forth. Then so all kinds of things. I, I don't know whether I answer your question or not, but butylase basically is a transpeptidase to a certain extent. So in one form, it's the endopeptidase, a cut between proteins. But asparagin and aspartic acid are often protected by glycosylation. So when it's glycosylated, it won't get cut. Okay? So if this is for HIV, for vaccine-wise, it's perfect. Because vaccine, HIV vaccine is heavily glycosylated. And you can link particular thing to it, and you can do quite a bit of it. So HIV envelope protein and so on and so forth, very useful. Okay? You can... <laughs> the glycoprotein, protein, okay, and, and so on and so forth. I think, I think the big question is now is whether you can get enough butylase because so far we're the only one producing butylase. So, and, 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 and apparently the situation is going to change. They're going to, um, some entrepreneur at NTU is going to form company and sell it, not me, huh? Okay, um, so. <laughs> That, I don't know whether to answer your question or not. So, am, am I correct to assume right now the most of the work for butylase is for modification of existing biologics, existing proteins to, to delete, to label, to conjugate? Um, 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 so, so can you do protein synthesis? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, or peptide synthesis? Uh, is that right? Yeah. Of course you can. That's why we said it's a peptide bond. You just make peptide bond. A peptide protein contains peptide bond. You can make anything you want, right? And, and that's why Chungpa have some problem spending because you need to join peptide protein together. You can join protein protein together, peptide protein together, or, you know, protein, protein, protein together. So you can have all kinds of things you can do. This is a synthesis. It is an enzyme that joined things together. That's why it's a super glue. I didn't explain what a super glue. It joins things, okay? And the peptide bond is stable to water, to all kinds of conditions. Okay. Yes, please. Hi, thanks, Prof. I'm just curious, so for the vitalis, is this possible to introduce a gene or protein form into the mammalian cell? Are they still active in this? I can't hear for some reason. Maybe. Oh, oh sorry. So, so I'm just curious for the, for the beauty list. Is it possible to introduce the gene or the protein into the mammalian system? Are they still active? One of our project, and one of our collaborators is one of postdoc. We want to use plant as the so-called bioreactor. So you think about it, the plant already got this enzyme. You can put it into the thing, in fact, it, you can now make drugs in the plant, and then you can eat it, and including all kinds of things, okay? So we can make your blue pea flower to be antidepressive, okay? We can make it to be anti-pain, to solve the opioid crisis. We can do all kinds of things, because the enzyme is already there. Or if the enzyme is not there, well, we can make it to, to, to be there. So this is, a, you can use, so one of my slides I didn't tell you is that you can use a plant as a bio maker, bio manufacturing, right? Because after all it's going to, and you can do the bacteria, same, same thing. You can do the bacteria express this type of thing. I, I, I think uh, time will tell. Well, my students, are they hearing this, all this? I want, I want this thing to be done, okay? Tomorrow, okay, um, so on and so forth. Yes, very good. I, I think, of course, plant, animal, uh, parasites, okay, you can think about the uh, uh, things. Okay, are there any more questions? Okay, if there are no more, uh, let, let me thank uh, Professor James Tom for an excellent <laughs> Oh.
Oh, oh, thank you. Quenched at this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sweeney. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.